Hello, good evening, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Breaking Views on NDTV. I am Ankit Tyagi. Two very important stories that we are uh, talking about on Breaking Views this evening. Remember, yesterday we spoke about how criminal apathy claimed life of a woman at the railway station. Similar case now being seen in the national capital. Within 48 hours, two people. A 35-year-old woman and a 17-year-old young man has died due to electrocution that took place after the rains in the national capital. Once again, life of the common citizen has zero value. We'll talk more about this during the course of the show. And the other story, on one side, electricity kills, but how there is has been a swadesh moment for an IPS officer. Police, ladies and gentlemen, when you talk about the uh, UP police, there are so many negative stories that you think about, but at least this one brought a smile on a 70-year-old woman, how an IPS officer is trying to transform the way people look at policing and the police in Uttar Pradesh. We'll uh, get you an exclusive interview uh, here on this uh, story as well. But before we go across to our top stories, let's very quickly cut across to this breaking news which is coming in at this uh, moment. Rahul Gandhi, the Congress leader, former member of uh, Parliament, will be visiting Manipur uh, on 29th June is what uh, we are being told. So, uh, you know, it's almost been two months of... Uh, a violence of tension in the state of Manipur, ethnic clashes taking place there. More than 100 people have lost their lives so far. Now, after the Congress party, which has been hitting out at the, uh, at the central government, asking the prime minister to speak about this issue, he has not spoken in the last 60 days. Uh, and uh, despite an all-party meeting, which was chaired by Home Minister Amit Shah, the Congress seems to be once again, in fact, uh, trying to highlight this issue. Now, Rahul Gandhi will be visiting the state of Manipur on 29th of uh, this month. So, day, af uh, day after, in fact, Rahul Gandhi will be visiting Manipur. Whether, given the current situation, uh, because the tension still is simmering in the state, army has been uh, deployed in many places. Whether he would be allowed, in fact, to visit Manipur, uh, that is going to be a big question. But at least the Congress once again trying to take the spotlight as far as the strife torn state is concerned and rahul gandhi will be visiting the state on 29th of this month uh, remember the congress party has continuously been pressing for the resignation of uh, the chief minister enbirin singh let me go across to my colleague uh, arvind gunasekar who's joining us at this moment arvind rahul gandhi uh, with decision to go to manipur uh, the B, it will create some sort of sharp politics around this as well. It will be interesting to see whether he gets the permission because the tension is still high in the state. Yeah, and okay, that's the catch here because Congress party has announced that uh, Rahul Gandhi will be visiting a uh, state of Manipur for two days on June 29th and 30th. And what they are planning is that, uh, according to them, Rahul Gandhi will be uh, visiting Imphal first and also nearby uh, region. And he is also, according to the Congress party, is also planning to visit the relief camps because relief camps have been set up uh, in the violence torn area. So Rahul Gandhi wants to visit those uh, relief camps also. And he is also planning to meet some civil uh, uh, groups, uh, representatives. So this is the plan, according to the Congress party. But the catch here is, whether he would be allowed to go to Manipur because if you could uh, remember on case even in the all party meeting uh, the opposition delegation uh, the opposition parties in a joint uh, way they raised the point that all party delegation should be taken to Manipur but uh, there was no concrete answer given by the government at that particular point of hour but okay. this time Congress party has announced unilaterally that Rahul Gandhi visit, will be visiting Manipur on June 29th and 30th what we have to see is whether he would be allowed to uh, enter the state or not that's right. That is going to be a very, very important aspect of this. Remember, the Home Minister had earlier gone there for a two-day visit to take stock of the situation. And it's been more than 50 days that tensions have been high in the state of Manipur. Arvind, thank you for joining us with all those details. Ladies and gentlemen, now bringing our focus back to the top story that we are talking about. This is about your life, about how there has to be People, those who are irresponsible, authorities, criminal negligence has to be answered so that lives are not unnecessarily lost. These two in just 48 hours in the national capital. And why am I saying that? We uh, spoke to the father, in fact, of uh, the 35-year-old woman who died at the Delhi railway station. 
but in almost as if it was playing out again in another part of the national capital a shocking incident even as we grapple uh, with the you know the story of the electrocution of a 35 year old woman sakshi ahuja at the new delhi railway station who has two young children now another news has come in and we i'll just play out some visuals in fact of that area and how this young man lost his uh, life a 17 year old boy tragically lost his life due to an electric shock in taimur nagar area which is located uh, near the new friends colony in the national capital a shameful incident to say the least second in 48 hours this 17 year old boy was walking towards his uncle's residence he was visiting his uncle from bengaluru his school holidays he was visiting his maternal uncle in the national capital and uh, uh, while he was going back to his uncle's house it was raining the family said that he uh, walked into a puddle where there was an uncovered live wire because of an overflowing drain this boy got electrocuted and died on the spot once again raising the question who is responsible for this criminal negligence that we are seeing in the, on the streets of the national capital ladies and gentlemen it's very very heartbreaking a 17 year old young boy his life snuffed just in seconds because somebody could not ensure proper drainage and somebody could not ensure that there are no live wires left in that spot joining me at this moment very quickly let me go across to jamal ahmed he is sohail who is 17 year old boy who uh, died in this tragic circumstances his uh, relative uh, uh, jamal sahab bahut bahut shukriya humse baat karne ke liye kal bhi humne is tarah ke ek ek pita se baat kar rahe the jinki beti is tarike se mari gayi aapke bacche ke sath kya hua kya kis tarike se aur kin circumstances mein unki jaan chali gayi is bacche ka ye apne mama ka yahan rehta tha ye ladka और रात को ये सोता था हमारे ही घर पे बिल हमारे मकान के ऊपर कि किसका घर छोटा है वहाँ एडजस्ट नहीं हो पाते थे इसलिए वहीं कमरे में ऊपर सोया करता था ये तो सुबह पाँच बजे ये वहाँ से निकल कर आया इचर मामी के घर की तरफ आ रहा था या रास्ते में पानी भरा हुआ था वहाँ किसी का करंट जो हो कोई शॉर्ट वगैरह हुआ पड़ा था तो उसमें जो है लड़का वहाँ एक्सपायर हो गया शॉर्ट लगा एक्सपायर हो गया जमाल साहब किसको आप मानते हैं इसके लिए दोषी मतलब इस तरीके से इसकी जान चली गई पानी वहां भरा हुआ था आ, क्या पहले कोई इस तरह की कंप्लेंट हुई है पहले कोई इस तरह का हादसा हुआ है आप लोगों ने कोई कंप्लेंट की हो देखिए इसकी मेन जो मेरी समझ में आती है इससे पहले भी हमारे यहाँ एक हादसा हुआ था पिछला सीजन में एक साथ दो सगे भाई का एक्सपायर एक दो सगे भाई एक्सपायर हो गए थे इसी तरह से पानी भर गया था यहाँ पानी भरने की वजह से ये सारे हादसे होते हैं यहाँ पे यहाँ वहाँ जो हम हम जिस एरिया में आते हैं यहाँ जो हमारे जो नेता है वो इस चीज़ को अगर फॉलो करे तो मुझे लगता है ये हादसे आगे ना होंगे क्योंकि ये पानी भरने की वजह से यहाँ पर कहीं किसी के घर में कोई बिजली शॉर्ट हुआ पड़ा है कोई तार शॉर्ट है लोगों को ध्यान भी नहीं होता हो लापरवाही भी हो जाती है तो इस वजह से और ये बिजली विभाग वाले कभी यहाँ अगर बारिश होकर पानी भर जाती है उनको पता है नाले का पानी अंदर भर जाता है कि बिजली नहीं काटते जब तक यहाँ से कोई फोन ना जाए कोई हादसा हो उसके बाद कोई फोन करे तभी ये बिजली काटते इससे पहले बिजली नहीं काटते ये क्या न्याय की उम्मीद कर रहे हैं आप लोग नहीं सर इस तरह का कोई यहाँ ऐसा तार खुला पड़ा हो कहीं नहीं होता है ये तो एक मान लीजिए किसी के घर में से तार वो अपना काम कर रहे हैं तो तार कहीं से शॉर्ट हो गया उनको भी ध्यान नहीं होगा और वो एक लोहे के एंगल से टच हुआ पड़ा था उससे उनका शटर वगैरह सारा करंट हो गया क्योंकि नीचे पानी सड़क पे पूरा भर गया है अब पानी भरने की वजह से वो बिजली ने जो जोर पकड़ लिया वो लड़का वहाँ से गुजरा हो एक्सपायर हो गया चमान साहब बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया हमारे साथ जुड़ने के लिए यू नो डॉक्टर किरण बेदी टॉप कॉप फॉर्मर टॉप कॉप आई ऑफिसर फॉर्मर लेफ्टिनेंट गवर्नर ऑफ पुडुचेरी Uh, is joining us knows delhi inside out but before i go to dr kiran bedi uh, i just want to play out ladies and gentlemen remember we were speaking to mr lokesh chopra the father of sakshi ahuja uh, who died at the railway station and and why am i playing uh, you know what he said yesterday because it's still fresh in my memory it just playing it's 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 like a you know it's replaying in my head again and again because yesterday he said the true tribute at least to my daughter would be that there should not be any more sakshis just listen to what he said yesterday
बहुत ब्रिलियंट स्टूडेंट रही है मेरी बेटी और आर्किटेक्ट थी और प्रोफेशनल थी अच्छा काम करती थी अच्छी माँ थी और ज्वाइंट फैमिली में रहने वाली सास ससुर की सेवा करने वाली सोसाइटी में काम करने वाली किसी की भी हेल्प करने वाली आज यदि उसका फीडबैक सोसाइटी में सो आदमी उसे ले लिया जाए तो उसकी निन्यानवे तारीफ करने वाले हो ऐसा नहीं है और हम तो कह रहे हैं कि एक साक्षी गई है ये साक्षी के जाने का जो ठीक है हमें अपना तो घर का अफसोस है ही है लेकिन आगे कोई दस या पंद्रह साक्षी और ना जाए उसमें कुछ सुधार हो such a sad uh, you know situation sad state of affairs if it was sakshi uh, you know two days back then it was sohail just yesterday but who's responsible is the big question dr bedi uh, two families you know who come from completely different startas of life are suffering because it was somebody's responsibility to ensure that there is a no water logging b there are uh, you know proper checks these wires are not left hanging it is somebody's responsibility ma'am who would you take responsible for these unnecessary debts i think you sh- you've shown two incidents one incident which has happened in a poorer colony is the resettlement colonies where loose wires is the norm loose wires is the norm hanging loose wires is the norm in summers they cause fire and in monsoons they cause electrocution so loose wires is the norm because of the living conditions it's li- it's because of living conditions nothing else Be- and everybody is responsible because these are the way people over population lives safety is not their issue You, you don't you, don't you see many times wo ready wale hook laga ke tar lete hain aur apne yahan light lagate hain it's all loose wires hmm we are very so in summers they cause fire and in monsoons they cause electrocution and these incidents those few incidents which come to our notice so it's a monsoon this is the monsoon the question is do we have the money do we have the budgets to ensure proper living conditions for these jj colonies these d- 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 clusters no do you know i remember many years ago when i was um, um, i was on the electioneering those days yes i my truck my truck or my used to go under the loose wires and i almost almost escaped electrocution they were all hanging wires and i had to dip every time my head to save myself so loose wires hanging in houses on the roads around is the, is a, not an exception it's the way we live but safety the, consider safety absolutely but I, the second incident yes the second incident of sakshi is a negligence is a negligence also of the department of the municipal services now there where monsoons you need to clear out these elect- see somewhere it's an official negligence somewhere it's a citizen negligence it's both ways and sometimes where it is a pattern of living conditions this is what's happening but ma'am you know when uh, like you said uh, most of the time people those who fight election win election these are the promises that they make to, uh, to the citizens better amenities improve infrastructure if they are not able to fulfill these promises shouldn't there be examples made of people those who make these kind of promises and then do not deliver these services to the citizens obviously it's a non performance of their responsibilities do they go house to house in normal time whether it's summer or winter do they go house to house but the question is if they go house to house who's going to pay for it proper electricity how is going to pay for a proper who's paying where's the money the point is uh, where is our money going if our money goes into wasteful expense then where is the money left for this where does the evaluate where does the voter evaluate which kind of elected representative what how did he spend the money because money is limited either you spend it on wasteful expenditure or expenditure which could be saved mm. and instead put put it on where life can be saved i think this is an evaluation to be done by a voter but is the voter in voter uh, conscious of this secondly is the municipal where the municipal services during the monsoon should should take stock of the situation and 
wherever you have hanging wires, loose wires, why are they not settled before? There That's is right. there a standard operating procedure, which which there's a, that they do a checklist and they tick the boxes that they've done it. And do they hold an area responsible, uh, op, uh, officer responsible? So it's negligence of duty, but it's also negligence of the way we live. Absolutely. And the way we live, and we live on the brink. We all do live on the brink. And the poorer you are, the more you live on the brink. Absolutely. Lack of choices. And then, of course, uh, the way our amenities uh, are supposed to function, they don't. Dr. Bedi, thank you so much. Uh, for speaking to us uh, and putting this point of view forward. Two lives, a 35-year-old woman, a 17-year-old boy, unnecessarily, unnecessarily being snuffed, their families made to suffer. These, these are absolutely avoidable cases with some, in fact, a focus of the authorities and check could have been avoided. You know, uh, it's difficult for most people to understand what would it mean to Noor Jahan, this 70-year-old uh, uh, grandmom, a woman, who has seen electricity in her house for the first, very first time. And what is the Swadesh connection? I will take you to Anukriti uh, Sharma herself. I spoke to her just a short while back. And uh, it was interesting to understand, while you talk about uh, the police in Uttar Pradesh, there are so much negative stories, the fear, uh, not only just uh, you know with the criminals, but also the common people when it comes to the police uniform. How Anukriti Sharma is trying to change that. Take a look at this conversation. Thank you so much for joining us here on NDTV. Uh, you know, I I'm sorry, I, I, I beg your pardon uh, to begin with, because usually when you hear the stories about uh, police, they're quite negative. People are scared of them along with the criminals. This story does help to change the way people look at the police and the policing service, ma'am. Yes, sir. First of all, thank you so much for having me on NDTV. And uh, as you rightly said that there is, I don't know, there is this unfounded fear in public uh, regarding police. There is a negative image of police. Uh, on the other hand, police is working 24-7 you know, for the people of this country. We, are, we do all sorts of things. And therefore, this is a small attempt to change uh, that negative image of the police. You could, can you please tell us, you, you, you mark this as a Swadesh moment uh, you know, for you. Uh, for your career as well. Uh, what do you mean by that? I mean, most of the people, uh, viewers who are watching must have seen the movie Swadesh in which uh, Shah Rukh Khan comes from, uh, in fact, working with NASA, comes back to the country and then due to his efforts, there is electricity in a village. Uh, you're comparing it uh, in the same way, ma'am. So uh, uh, can you tell us how all this happened? Okay, so this uh, actually is the Swadesh moment for me. So I was pursuing PhD in US and I vividly remember that uh, this movie had a deep impact on me. I wanted to come back and do something which can make little change in a little positive change in the lives of people. So therefore I decided to drop out uh, from my PhD and started preparing for civil services examination. And uh, when I was preparing, I had certain things in mind what I wanted to do uh, after joining the services. So when I finally got selected into Indian Police Service, I remembered all those things which I faced as a common citizen and I wanted to change that. Therefore, uh, we uh, started this initiative called Police My Friend. As a part of that, uh, we thought that there are sections of the society, uh, for example, women or elderly or children who are too scared of police. They never come to Thana. They never come to police offices. Uh, even a genuine person with a genuine complaint is fearful of police. That needs to change and the change will not come in a day. So we decided to go into the public. We decided to hold chopals, interact with uh, women of the village. And we used to go in the meetings and just ask, okay, what is your police related issue? You always complain that police never hears us. So we have to listen to you and tell you and one very good thing in uh, Uttar Pradesh is that we have also started Mahila Sashakti Karan Abhyan. Mm -hmm. As part of this, everyone is uh, asked to go and hold Chopals. So as part of this Gram Chopal, we actually went to this village. It's called Khedi village, located in the jurisdiction of uh, Agota Police Station of Buland Shehir. We went there and as usual, we asked them that whatever issues you have, um, you can express and we'll try to address them. First of all, we take complaints from the people and then we also do um, uh, provide some information to do preventive policy. Right. So when we asked um, people 
दिस लेडी नूर जहां शी स्टूड अप एंड शी सेट मेरे जीवन का एक ही समस्या है कि मेरे घर में बिजली का कनेक्शन नहीं दैट्स वॉट शी सेट नाउ वेन पीपल सी एन ऑफिसर इन फ्रंट ऑफ देम दे डोंट नो वेदर ये इस विभाग का है या इस विभाग का है ऑल दे नो इज दैट दे हैव एन ऑफिसर इन फ्रंट हु कैन एड्रेस द प्रॉब्लम एंड शी कैन गेट इट डन दैट टाइम इट डेंट सीम अप्रोप्रिएट टू आस्क हर टू गो एंड कॉन्टैक्ट द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी डिपार्टमेंट एंड गेट हर वर्क डन वी सेट दैट अम्मा जी यू हैव अप्रोच अस वील सी हाउ दिस कैन बी डन so we tried to find it out from the pradhan of the village and he said that she couldn't apply because she doesn't have enough money she is hmm. a widow hmm. uh 70 year old she is illiterate she cannot do the paperwork on by herself she has two daughters who are married off in punjab so who will do it for her so we decided we'll do it for her and uh, we contacted the electricity department we did the paperwork we bought a fan and a bulb it was a very very small gesture or it was a very small task for us not a big deal so no. we were able to get it done for her and it actually uh, brought smile on her face and the entire village was very happy with the way police uh, was able to address a small simple problem of an elder so you know these this, pictures are a proof of uh, the kind of smile that you've been able to bring on her face uh, quite grinning new jaha there but um, you know uh, this initiative that you have taken and uh, quite an inspiring story uh, yourself your story of coming from united states back into the country serving in the grassroots now uh, particularly talking about uttar pradesh police largely in the limelight for you know questions and all the negative publicity do you think that uh, these kind of initiatives would go a long way in building that bridge between the people and the 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 police which is supposed to be serving the people yes sir we are actually continue we are undergoing a transformation in the entire country police is transforming from a force to service and this transformation will not come in a day we have to continuously work upon it the fear inside the people will not go there are um, and therefore we are trying to reach out we are telling people that we are the best friend you can ask for uh did you yes. find any resistance in your department with the kind of initiatives that you are taking you know this will soften the image of the police uttar pradesh the is known for crime badlands i mean this will completely go against the image of the police there and and i also wanted to understand does participation or uh, officers like you women officers is it important in the way the policing is done and the and the and the interaction of the police with the people yes absolutely um there see some even in my batchmates there are some people who think that police needs to be stern and strong and uh, it should look very strict i think we sh- for a law abiding citizen of this country we should be the most approachable person we should be warm and friendly ready to hear them out and solve their problem but i have been extremely lucky i had a lot of support from my seniors therefore i have been able to do this uh, non stop and even at the highest level as i told you mission shakti is going on hmm. all the officers are um, changing their approach they are trying to be more people friendly so we are together trying to bring this change as far as the police officers um, as you said we really need more and more police officers police officers for sure are more sensitive i think they uh, can understand the problem which women face in their house mm. uh, in a better way and can address them in a better way because they know where the solution lies so if we have more women in the force it's going to make our force the entire police force more sensitive more empathetic and there is no doubt that we'll be able to control crime in a more citizen centric uh, way also it was such a pleasure uh, hearing this story and talking to you thank you so much all the best for your future initiatives fantastic to speak to you here on ndtv thank you so much thank you more humane policing uh, leaving on that note uh, this evening's program of breaking views thank you so much good night